just letting tyres down there. We're about to head out onto Inskip Point, down along the beach, uh, jump on the barge, and we're going to head across to Fraser Island for a few days. Been about three or four years since I was last year, so I'm really looking forward to getting back over Fraser, have a good look around. This is just a fantastic place and well worth coming to have a look at. Let's see if we can start the day out without getting stuck on this infamous beach. Old Inskip Point. Plenty of people get stuck here, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's not start the day out with it. Don't get stuck here, will you, mate? Well, I haven't seen it this easy for a fair while. Lucky <laughs> you're um, uh, not too soft for that this year. <laughs> yeah, we got a fair bit of rain last night, so it's um, packed it down a bit. Looks a bit choppy out there, too. Yeah, much a bit blowy today. A couple of tourist buses heading across, but um, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad a day, I reckon. Sun's trying to poke through those clouds, so by the time we get up there, it'll be perfect. Right, the journey begins on the barge, and then across the Fraser Island. It's going to be a cracking few days. Um, let's not start this trip off with a recovery of a debts and recovering that, that, that Toyota before you get off the barge, mate. <laughs> oh, look, mate, that sounds that hard. I don't think I'll even put it in four and drive being a Toyota. <laughs> oh, famous last words, they are. Hey, look, I'm off. Do you lead the way? You know, one of the worst probably combinations we've got coming away with these two vehicles, you know what that is? behind the wheels. Well, kind of, but um, see if uh, Datsun gets stuck, it's got to be recovered by a Toyota, and if a Toyota gets stuck, well, it's got to be recovered by a Datsun. How's that going to go down? I think the Datsun getting recovered by the Toyota is going to be okay, but I can't see the Toyota actually getting stuck anyway. Yeah, well, we'll see, eh? How good does that be, eh? Oh, how good's this? Unbelievable driving over here, Phoenix. It's just a magnificent place. I can't believe it's taken you three years to get back. <laughs> well, you know, it's not just down the road. A bit like you, we're only a couple of hours away. Um, yeah, it's a fair hike to get up here, so a bit of planning goes involved. But hey, we're here and uh, that's the main thing. We're going to have a crack in a few days. Well, we've certainly hit the beach at the perfect time with the tides. I think high tide this morning was about quarter to six. And it was it now, but just after nine o'clock, so we've got um, plenty of time. The tide's heading out, so uh, we've got plenty of time to be driving the beach, which is a good thing. Yeah, it is, because I think as we get up further, there'll be a little bit less sand on the beach, so the water might be up a little bit higher than we think. Yeah, right, eh? Well, how good is this? This is a long way from the high country from what I'm sort of used to driving, but it's great to be back on Fraser Island. Been talking about coming up here for a while. But look, I've got the tyre pressures, I've got them down nice and low. I'm running 16 PSI in the front, I've got 18 PSI in the back. Working really, really well in this soft sand, because it is quite soft at the moment. So, but one thing you've got to be extremely careful of, particularly when you're running low tyre pressures like what we're running at the moment, is not to turn too sharply, because that's when you run a big risk of rolling tyres off rims, and that could be in disaster with maybe potential rollovers and that sort of thing. And just take your time when you're cruising up the beach, wash out for any washouts and you know dips in the sand, you know, they can sneak up on you very quickly. So, so just remember too, when you've got vehicles coming towards you like we have right now, past these couple of vehicles, you've got to pass the vehicles exactly the same way as you would a traveling over here on the mainland. So pass them with them on your right hand side. Same road rules apply when you come out here on the island. You got a maximum speed limit up the main beach of 80 kilometers an hour and the inland tracks are 30k an hour. So you just gotta make sure you stick to those speed limits because yep, the police do come over here every now and then and they'll run their radars up and down the main beach here and if you're speeding, well, you're gonna cop a fine just like you normally would as if you're back on the mainland. So I'm just cruising up here, got high range four wheel drive. Um, driving along here very, very nice. You've got those low tire pressures going in this soft sand. Working an absolute treat. And how good's this? Well, just out here on Fraser Island. Doesn't get much better than this. Even though there's 
an 80 kilometre an hour speed limit along the main beach here. But if you're doing 80 k's an hour, and especially on a day like today, probably a little bit too fast. Look, I'm only cruising along here at 50 k an hour. Really nice speed. It's giving me plenty of time to see all the humps and bumps and washouts. And the sand's also pretty soft. There's low tide pressure I'm running on. Work an absolute treat. So stick with the conditions. Drive to those conditions. Keep it safe. And you'll have a good holiday when you come out here. Now you'll find a number of these sort of little freshwater washouts from Ireland through the beach that have run out in the ocean. Just got to slow down when you approach those. You just never know how deep they might be or how soft they might be on the bottom. Well mate, you know I'm a bit partial to um, to a good meat pie. Well, um, last time we were here, these, that bakery up here at Yurong is pretty damn good. So I think we're going to have to drop in and um, get a pie and sauce I reckon. Sounds like a plan, but don't you get bogged in that soft sand right there. Oh, it's pretty soft in here. Hey, if there's a pie at the end of the road, mate, I'll make sure I get through. Don't worry about that. Let's <laughs> hope there's a park at the bottom. Can you smell those pies? Oh, mate, they were pretty good last time we were here, so this is um, one of the highlights I'm looking for is coming out on Fraser. Is getting into this bakery up here. It'd be pretty good. We've got a car park. bakery done again for um, for another time. Well worth the stop over I reckon. Good old crack and pine sauce to start the day out on the island. Ripper way to go I reckon. <laughs> Not a bad way to do it. Just think we've got to come back past it later on too. Oh that'd be a shame. That means we might have to stop in again. Yeah we can always eat a few pies. <laughs> All right, back out on the beach and um, probably where we're heading for now. Probably um, Eli Creek, I reckon. Yeah, we might go and get our toes wet. See what we can come up with. There might even be a dingo wandering around Eli. There was last time I was there. Alright, we're going to have a look, eh? Just some of the other hazards you've got to think about when you're driving up the beaches here is fishermen coming out here to go and catch a bit of a fish, try and get a bit of lunch. Just make sure you watch out for those guys when you're driving up and down the beach here. Magnificent day this is, fitting from one of the best highways there is in Australia, I reckon the drive on this Fraser Island, just absolutely magnificent. So we're just approaching uh, Eli Creek up here, where we're going to drop out here and have a bit of a look. Probably a good idea to a bit of a slow down, sometimes this can be a bit of a decent drop into the creek here. Now they reckon 80 million litres of fresh water a day to roll out of this creek and into the ocean. 80 million litres. You've got to think, where does that keep coming from? Absolutely amazing. So we're going to park up here, we're going to have a bit of a walk upstream and do the walk down the creek. This is well worth checking out. This is a popular spot. major landmark on the Fraser Island coast, on the east coast of Fraser, is the SS Mahino. This, this bit ship was built in Scotland way back in 1905. There's a passenger liner ship, so we're going to just drop off here, have a bit of a look, and uh, check out what's left. Unfortunately, there's not a great deal more to sort of see of it from what it was back in its former days. And during the First World War, she served as a hospital ship in the English Channel. And by 1935, the Mahino had been taken out of service and was sold to a shipbreaker in Japan. On the 25th of June, 1935, while being towed to Osaka to be broken up, she was caught in a wild cyclone, about 80 kilometers off the coast of Queensland. The tow line snapped, and on the 9th of July, 1935, the Mahino became beached on the east coast of Fraser Island, which is now its final resting place. Well mate, this is our 
camp zone for the night. Uh, camp zone number six on the sign up there. So we're rocking off the beach here and um, find somewhere to camp, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon it'd be a wise thing if we can find a flattish area in case of rain so we don't fill with water. Well, let's have a bit of a look and uh, see how we go, eh? Been a few people in and out of here. Yeah, must have been a few already having a bit of a look. Alright mate, this spot here looks pretty good. Um, nice bit of flat grassy spot, shot by a bit of trees and with an ocean view. Can't ask for any better <laughs> than that. G'day guys, how are we going? Well, we're just about to start day two on our adventure around Fraser Island. Now I've got a good mate of mine here, Dave, who's come along for the trip. He's a local up here in Queensland. He goes to around Fraser Island pretty much like I go to Vic High Country all the time. So good having a good mate of mine along. But before we go, head off today, we're just going to show you where we started from yesterday to where we've got from today. So we'll go through the map. All right, Dave, we got on the barge early yesterday morning from uh, Inskip Point. Uh, where'd we sort of go from there? Across to hit Hook Point here? Yeah, we got across off here at um, there and then ran Hook Point. She was a little bit tight there because we were two hours after high tide, yep. which meant it was a little bit soft. And then we just scooted up the beach as the sun came out. And we just did a few runs up here, past yep. Dilly Village, all the way up to Yurong. Yurong. That's where we got the old famous pie from. That's the one. <laughs> You've got to have a pie at Yurong when oh, you come you over here. Oh, you have a pie at Yurong when you come up here. But this was pretty cool for me to drive up this part of the beach because the last time I came here a few years ago we had to take the inland road before we came back out in the beach so this was the first time driving this section which was pretty cool. Yeah it was actually, um, it's a good bit of beach that, um, you just got to get your tides right yeah. because as you come around Hook Point there's a few old trees laying on the beach and, yep. and uh, yeah you can get caught because you can't get up around them into the dunes. Right, Dave, so after we uh, left Euron after that famous pie we headed up the beach to um, Eli Creek, that was pretty cool seeing that. So much fresh water running out through, out through that. They reckon 80 million litres a day rolls out yeah, through that. Yeah, it's amazing. Creek. You stand oh, still yeah. and your feet sink. Yeah. You just but, can't park your car in it, that's for sure. But that's certainly well worth stopping off there. Have a look at that. Uh, do the walk down the creek or have a float down if you've got something to float down on. But well worth checking Eli, Eli Creek. And then we moved on up to the uh, famous shipwreck on Fraser Island, the Mahino. Yep. And lo and behold, there was no one there. That, that's the first time I've ever seen it. We had 20 minutes with no one there. So Unbelievable. we had the whole ship no to one there. take photos <laughs> and do whatever we wanted with yeah, no one there. That was pretty cool. So after having a look at that, then we've moved on up to camp for the night where we are right now. Just past Cathedral Beach and look, this is a great spot here. Straight out under the ocean. Um, so this is where we're going to start from today. Alright, I'll just leave this magnificent spot here. We've camped up here on the eastern beach for last night. Now heading back out on the beach. Perfect time to hit the beach. We're now about probably two hours. Um, just the other side of high tides, the tide's going out, so it's now going to be perfect time. Give us stacks of time on the beach for uh, what we're going to do today and get up the top end and spend a few nights up there. Just approaching our Indian head. First challenge probably for the day. Let's see how we go. Let's see on the other side, mate. No worries, nice and easy. Yeah, not too bad. A little bit soft there in the middle, but um, yeah, starting to come a bit firmer in the middle here. But, uh, all good. Ah, back out the other side. No worries. Oh, look at that side up the beach. How good's that? Yeah, it's starting to look really good. All we need is that cloud to disappear and the sun to come out. We're even better. Just the uh, tip of Sandy Cape up the top there. What a great view that is. Yeah, very impressive. And the beach is just absolutely beautiful to drive along in the morning too. 
fair bit firmer over this side compared to um, the other side of Indian Head this morning. Yeah, it doesn't look quite as rough, so not as much wind around, it's just perfect. take on the Gala Rocks. This is probably one of the main challenges on Fraser Island with getting yourself up to the tip. Rough in through here. Alrighty. It's only a fairly short section across here but does get quite soft in the middle. One thing I'm not using at the moment is certainly any lockers at all. Set gear, high range, plenty of momentum. Certainly soft, got to keep it up around the corner here. No worries so far, Dave. Yeah, we're all going with you, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, no worries today. Certainly that rain over the last couple of days has certainly helped getting over here. It certainly has. It's, uh, it's a little bit soft, but nothing like that powdery stuff. No, but we've still got to come back yet. That's correct. A couple <laughs> of days of warm weather and it'll be totally different. Okay, home stretch now, final run up the beach. To the northernmost tip of Fraser Island, Sandy Cape. When you do come up here, you've got to try and get yourself up over Indian Head, over Nagala Rocks, because this section of Fraser Island is just absolutely pristine. Beautiful part of the island, generally gets a bit quieter when you come up this far, but uh, do try and come to the beaches are absolutely pristine. It's a beautiful drive right here this morning, rock hard sand. It's one of the best gazetted roads I reckon you're going to drive on anywhere in Australia. This is just amazing. Well, Dave, here we are, mate. Northernmost tip of Fraser Island. There's a few others up here, but how good is this? It doesn't get any better. <laughs> Just, uh, we've got a bit of, bit of beach to hopefully get down the other side to a camp spot. Oh, this is dead amazing. Absolutely pristine part of Fraser Island is certainly coming up here. It certainly is. It's well worth the hassle of getting around all the bypasses and getting stuck in the sand and everything that this will do. This is the thing when you do come up here, you've got to make sure you take the tides into account and get up here in plenty of time to get along this section of beach before the tide comes back in. Because this is one of the few parts of probably Australia that I certainly know of where you are completely and utterly controlled by Mother Nature. And the reason what I mean by that, because this section of beach I'm driving here right now, this is all shut off. When the tide comes back in, this beach will be completely shut off. So. 
when you come up here you've got to be prepared for that because if something goes wrong up here you can't just get in the back of your full drive and and head back for you know whatever reasons you've got to get out of here for so really take that into account come up here and be really prepared for the remoteness of sandy cape let's say we're going to find a camp spot eh? i think that's a very good idea 